Hi guys and welcome to the Casual Weekcast. I'm Ellen and I'm Madeline and let's chat. Hey guys, welcome back. So today we brought a very special guest. Her name is Vicky. We met in high school. Vicky, do you want to tell everyone about yourself? Hi, I'm Vicky, and I'm 19. I met Ellen and Madden in high school. We're like classmates, and kind of like best friend. I actually met Vicky in art class. And she sat next to me, and we sat next to each other for every art class. But we wouldn't talk to each other; we just sit next to each other every day. And we have this kind of friendship, like silent friendship. It was really funny because we were both too scared to talk to each other. And then I don't even remember how we broke the ice, but apparently we just started talking. And then after a while, we clicked really well. And now we're kind of like best friends. It's kind of amazing. I remember the first time I talked to you is because I have some problem with drawing. I don't know what were we doing, so I ask you because like you're really good at drawing. I actually kind of forgot about that, but I was just like, huh. We started talking. At what point? I think it's at the end of the sketching class. Yeah, I think that's the case with me and you too, right, Madeline? I think in high school in ninth grade, I don't think we talked that much. But one day we just no, it was when you first came to Taichung, and then we started talking. I think. Yeah, we didn't really talk until I'm in Morrison when we're. At the same dorm. Wait, I bet you guys haven't talked in literally like a year now. Oh, that's not your truth though. The last time I talked to Madden, it's like April eleven. I still remember. It's our skating contest or something. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. Yeah. I went to Taipei at that time. I remember that. And then it's pandemic. So you guys have some catching up to do, huh? Well, we brought in Vicky because Madeline and I are both very, very single, and we have a friend who's not single, and so we can talk. About relationships, I'm gonna give a quick background. So I basically only ever dated one guy. That's all the experience I ever had. What about you, Madeline? I have dated no one in my entire life. That's our experience, guys. So Vicky, we would love for you to share. Well, basically, I dated two guys. One for like a month, and one is like we're still dating. The one month one, like this doesn't work out. You were also younger, so it's a less mature relationship. I was like 16, and so funny. That we met relationship problems together at the same time. You know, it's really weird for me to look back. I don't even know how why we even started dating because my state right now. It's very hard for me to date someone. I don't know what it is. Like when a guy starts liking me, I am scared and I run. So that's why I'm very single. What about you, Madeline? Why are you single? I'm kind of in the same state as you, but for my entire life, like whenever a guy likes me or I feel like a guy likes me, then I will avoid him. So. Being cold to him, not in a rude way, or I'd ignore him. So I guess that's why I'm single. Do you know why you're like that? I think first of all, I am a very awkward person. Second of all, I don't really know how to talk to guys, and I just think I'm too scared to open up. How about you, Vicky? How do you not be scared when it comes to getting closer with a guy? I can trust people easily. I got hurt from my last relationship, like a bit, because I kind of. Trust him so much, but for this relationship, we were best friends. We talked for like two years before we got together. Oh, you're talking about the current one, right? The last one you trusted the guy, and then the current one, he's your best friend. Yeah, and I basically know everything of him, and I trust him. I think that's the best kind of relationship. If you want a good relationship, you need to be good friends with them first. All that passionate tension you feel like at first that doesn't really last. I don't get how love at the first sight works because I have. To talk to the person, and I get to know him more. I feel like love at first sight is just. What the movies and whatever they make it out. So like, oh my god, you watch it, you're like, oh, they're so cute, romantic. But I don't really believe it, honestly. Yeah, relationships are more than just attraction or that hot tension you feel. It's more about how people get along with each other, or like what Vicky said, how well they know each other. So a trust is required to be built before the two can get deeper into the relationship. There's a saying: the magic wears off after two years. So imagine if you're being in a long-term relationship and you have to live with them basically for the rest of your life. If you guys are not best friends, then you guys are just gonna tear each other apart in the house, you know? I think like best friend and turn into relationships pretty good because you know each other well already, so you know each other like the point where they will get married. 
something, so you will really step on it. You know what they care about or something like that. So you would consider your stage right now. You're in a long term relationship.、Mm, probably, I hope. So, do you have any advice for us <laughs> for non relationship people? I mean, just don't be afraid to talk to guys or hit up guys. I think everyone will meet their Mister Right or Missus Right, and sometimes it just you guys haven't meet the right one. So you're not sure about that when there's someone that pop out, and you will know it that it's the right one. Do you feel like a different person being in a relationship versus not? Like, how do you think you're different now compared to when you're single? Did I change a lot? Do you think I change a lot? Because I don't think I change a lot. I mean, appearance, like I change a lot, but not my personality. Do you think I change? I think you've always just been a very open-minded person, and you're very open to new experiences. So, what changed is the new experiences that you gained from making new friends, and then obviously going to study abroad. But I don't know. In what ways you've changed? I've just known you for so long, and you've always just been the same kind and warm person that you are. I think there is one part that I changed. I was too nice to people before. I don't know how to say no to people, but if now I will stand up for myself if something happens to me or like someone say something to me. I think that's important for everyone, not just for like being in a relationship. We all need to know how to set boundaries and in a way that's not being scared when you're doing so, but also being not rude. Also, I'm in a relationship right now, so I won't be like, "Well, this guy like me" or something like that. I don't really care about people judging me anymore. I mean, I still care about it, but not that much. But that's nice because we shouldn't let other people dictate how we manage our relationships. What lessons have you learned from being in a relationship? It's really important that in the relationship you can be yourself. You don't have to be afraid that will he think bad about me if I do something. Just be yourself. I think that's a good relationship. This is a personal struggle for me. I am terrible at just being myself when I'm around people I like romantically. I don't know why. I'm just so nervous that I can't. Function as a normal human being. I might just be very like stoic and kind of robotic in my movements, <laughs> and I don't know why. I think it's kind of embarrassing, but that's usually how I respond around people that I have feelings for. In middle school, I had this. Crush on one of my classmates, and whenever we have to talk about group assignment or homework or just random things, I will always talk in a very awkward manner, in a very unnatural way. And now thinking back, I think I was being way too self conscious, way too awkward, and I didn't get to show him who I really am. So basically, I'm a really weird person. I won't commit to a relationship or like. A- Crush until I'm pretty sure that the guy like me back. So I will be like, will he like me or not or something like that? But I won't tell myself that oh, I actually like him. I remember, I totally remember. We were shipping you and your current boyfriend so much, and then you just kept denying it. But it was so obvious, and I couldn't tell if you were just dumb or you're just lying. I was actually being dumb because I don't think we will work out. I don't even think we will date back then. I was the one who think long distance will work, and I think long distance is fine. People were like, they don't date because. Because they will have to do long distance after graduation. I was like, it's fine. Long distance is fine. If you guys work out, then it's true love. True, true. You change your mind though. But you and your current boyfriend, you guys are in a long distance relationship though. I mean, we are, but I don't like long distance. I mean, who will like long distance? Speaking of long distance relationships, can you tell us what that's like? I don't know about other people. For us, we call every day and we share everything in our life. I will tell him what happened to me, like. What did I do? And he will tell me what happened. That's so cute. That's like me and my mom. I think having conversation is really important in long distance relationship. And if you feel uncomfortable on something, you just have to speak it out because you guys can see each other in person. So he will know that you don't feel good or something. So you just have to say it out. You're talking about when you guys have some sort of conflict, but he didn't know that you're upset about something, so you have to tell him about it. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of conflicts, how do you guys deal with Conflicts and arguments in a relationship. I think we only had a fight for one or two times. I think we just make our point clear and we just stop the argument and come back at tomorrow. Like we need to both calm down first. Yeah, have your own space a little bit and have a clearer train of thought. Yeah, if it's necessary, then we will just talk about it again. But if we both make our point clear and we understand each other, then I don't think we have to brought it up again. You know, it's so weird thinking about people my age. You're not even. 
even my age or younger, but people around my age group, that's like in a committed relationship. I'm still mind blown. I don't know how you do it. Alright, for me, I won't think that we'll get married. We'll last. I just cherish every moment with him. I think that's good enough. You don't even know what will the future be like. Why will you worry about it? I think to a certain extent, that's a pretty healthy mindset. You don't want to over plan your life. That's not good for your mental health. But yeah, I think it's really important to enjoy the present and cherish the moment. And we all need to worry about the future at some point. But like you said, if we over worry too much, then it becomes more stressful than enjoyable. So I think Vicky's advice is actually pretty mature. Wait, Malin, you have to tell us. You have to tell us what is your type. Come on, <laughs> your dream guy. For my ideal type, I wish the guy can be respectful to people in general, regardless of their job or nationality or background or whatever. And I also want a guy to be open-minded. And I also want a guy who has basically a similar. Political view or perspective, like have the same values. Yeah, I can imagine the life with a guy who holds a really different perspective can lead to a lot of avoidable conflict. And also, a lot of couples are like that, and they work out. But I do not wish to have similar troubles in the future. That's totally valid. I think you have a good criteria, Vicky. Tell us what made you attracted to your current boyfriend, or not even attracted, just qualities you like. He really respect me. He'll ask me everything before doing it or something. I mean, he's smart, and okay, so he curious everything. When we're watching a movie or something, if there's of a cowboy who will stop the movie and search it up, but for me, I was just like whatever. I don't need to think about it. Actually, I kind of asked that question spontaneously. I didn't think beforehand. I feel like my answer would be pretty similar to Madeline's. Like, obviously, I want a respectful guy, and obviously, I also want to have similar values. But just thinking about my last relationship, that was not the case, and I dated him anyway, <laughs> just because you know my brain it was on the love drug. Okay, I just went with my heart. Didn't care if we didn't have the same values, whatever. Just I liked him. He liked me. It was simple, you know. If I were to do this again, I would probably be more careful and more picky about choosing the guy that is on the same wave. Flame as me, and we can help each other grow, and just someone that can make you become the best version of you, and you could do the same for him. Yeah, I definitely agree with her point because relationship goes two ways. Like friendship, you need a partner who's able to support you, and even better if they share the same hobby or similar hobby with you, so the two of you can grow with each other, help each other. Oh,、well, Madeline, you know a lot about relationships for someone who's never been in one. I guess this is thanks to all the stories I heard from other people, including the stories from you guys. <laughs> yeah. In high school, I went to her room basically every day to rant about my boy problems. Not every day, but almost every day. I feel kind of sorry for Madeline, but also she knows what she's talking about. I, by the way, I don't know if there's anything. Oh yes, we need to at some point talk about being single is okay too. I think it's really important to know that your partner is not everything in your life. There's a lot of Things other than love, so don't be afraid to break up with your partner if you really think you can't stand the relationship. For example, he will hit you or be really impatient with you or something. Because some people will think that we have been dating for six years or something. It's like my young life. It's all about him. So if I break up with him, everything just disappear. If we live until like hundred years, if you're twenty five and you broke up with your boyfriend and you still got seventy five years to live, it's fine to not be in a relationship. Just be yourself and. Anything that you're comfortable with. Thank you, Vicky, for bringing that up. By the way, I think it's super important that we let the listeners know that you don't have to be in a relationship, especially if it's doing more harm than good. Especially if it's toxic, abusive, or just when it becomes too much, when your life just revolves only about him or her, then maybe you should let them go. Or if you're single right now, and that's fine too, you shouldn't feel pressured to be in a relationship. Definitely, I agree with both Elena and Vicky. They brought up really good points. It's okay to put being in a relationship as one of the main goals of your life, but just so you know that even if you have to get out of a relationship, it's not the end of a world. The world is so big. There's a lot of stuff for you to explore, and there's a lot of 
stuff that you have experienced already. Relationship is not what makes you as a person. To conclude is love you where you're at right now first, and then love will come. Well, thank you, Vicky, for being our guest. We had a great time chatting, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.